Thank you so much and uh, welcome to this RSNA forum. We're going to talk about first time right patient centered imaging and the journey to a confident diagnosis. And that's a mouthful. I'll reveal a little bit of the curtain uh, and it's all about empowering the people behind the image. That's what we're going to talk about. I've got Jan Kimpen here today, who's Hello, the chief medical officer of Philips. We're going to make this interactive and we're, I'm going to ask Jan a couple of questions. He's probably got a couple of challenging questions for me as well as the BG leader for diagnostic imaging. But let's start it off, Jan. What do you see as the challenge today, the challenges today in the healthcare system? I think is, this is a great question to start off this, uh, this discussion because we have to realize that the healthcare system, the healthcare providers, doctors, other healthcare professionals, but also patients are facing more and more complex challenges. Just to name a few, the world population is increasing enormously because we all get older. And this, com this comes with a lot of chronic diseases. Patients, second one, patients are increasingly engaged measuring with wearables and apps their own vital parameters that they want to, to, to make part of the consultation they have with their doctors. Another challenge is the pressure on costs. And then there is the huge challenge of the increasing burnout in healthcare professionals because, or partially because, the, uh, the digitalization that is taking hold in the healthcare system. So in order to address these, this myriad and, and, uh, of challenges, we need a framework, a paradigm to, to put that all together. And the paradigm that we are using nowadays and that Philips is supporting a lot is value-based healthcare. Value-based healthcare was a theoretical framework for 10, 15 years. And it's coming part of daily practice now. And value-based healthcare tries to reconcile a number of goals that are all as important. Patient outcome, patient experience, healthcare professional satisfaction, sustaining that, and that all at lower cost. And if, that, if, if you put that all together, healthcare, the healthcare world is asking for seamless integration. And I'm going to spend two words on what seamless means for patients and for healthcare professionals. For patients, it means breaking down the silos, the silos that are now organized from living a healthy life, taking the necessary preventive precautions if you're belonging to a risk group. If you get sick, go to the hospital as soon as possible and get the first time right diagnosis immediately. Then your treatment as minimally invasive as possible and get out of the hospital as soon as possible to be monitored at home. For the healthcare professional, seamless means, means another thing, means workflow enabling, enabling. trying to, to improve the work, workflow in a way that it is almost industrialized, that you can see more patients in a high quality care setting with less resources. Um, and I give you, I'm going to give you only, only one example, is that we as Philips, we try to come with solutions for this. We have to stop selling boxes with a CT scan and a service contract. We have to come with a solution that is enabling that. And our IntelliSpace portal is one of the examples how we do that. That's a great summary. And so that obviously leads into the question, we're here at RSNA, for the radiologists, for the radiology department, for the staff around the departments, what does this really mean? What does that imply? I think this, this transformation in healthcare is not going to pass the door of the radiologists. Radiologists will, and their work, will be impacted a lot by, this, by all these challenges. And I, I always call the radiologists the diagnostic quarterbacks. They are gathering massive amounts of information through the images. They have to integrate this information of the images with all other data that come from the patient and from the patient files. They have to, put, to make a diagnosis. They have to report this diagnosis out to the clinicians. And they have to do this first time right, because they are guiding the treatment of the clinicians. And I have to admit, and I never realized it before, I think, well enough, that this is a huge responsibility. It is almost scary, this responsibility, being the quarterback guiding the treatment later on. 
And I think as Philips, we should share this responsibility with the radiologists by giving them tools, sm uh, smart devices, software, services, and integrated solutions to to make them confident in making the diagnosis. The diagnosis that needs to be first time right. And we will improve the workflow doing that. And if necessary, we will put a stack of artificial intelligence on top of that, of that all in order to help them make that first time right diagnosis. And again, I am giving the example of the IntelliSpace portal here, where with, where with every new edition, which is the 10th one now this year that we are showcasing here now, we are adding new functionalities that are enabling a speedy workflow for healthcare professionals in the radiology department. But now I'm going to I'm going to send a question to you case because you are the leader of of diagnostic imaging solutions. How do you think about meeting these unmet needs and these big challenges in healthcare from your perspective as a diagnostic imaging leader? Thank you, Jan, and thank you again for reminding all of us what an incredibly exciting space, but also challenging space this really is. You said productivity. You talked about also stress levels for the department, for the radiologist, um, from volume to value. This is a really, really complicated journey that we're taking. And so we decided actually to take a systems perspective to what we're trying to solve together with people. A system perspective empowering the people behind the image. And on this graph, you can sort of see what the care cycle is for a typical patient that is ha, has to be diagnosed and that falls into a treatment path and that requires follow-up. And you'll notice that there are different roles to play, different people uh, who play a fundamental role. You have the patient, but you also have the radiologist, you also have the surgeon, the collaborating physician, the administrator. It's a system, and that system you need to respect and you need to connect the dots. You mentioned first time right, and first time right is a topic to my heart. It's based on four pillars. First of all, this system has huge cost pressure. So we need to help, as Philips, we need to help that system to drive productivity and cost down. Secondly, we need to take the patient and the staff at heart. Better patient and staff experience. Thirdly, connecting the dots. That really means driving meaningful data um, and understanding the data and insights. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, obviously it's our role to drive better treatments and patient outcomes. So that's first time right. We take that incredibly seriously. We see the system as a whole. We want to empower the people behind the image and we do that through the four pillars of first okay. time right. Exciting, when I, look, when I look at your diagram here and I, I, I hear you speak about first time right diagnosis, and breaking down silos and, and, and making it work for the, for the radiologists, it is, it is clearly important that there needs to be a connection between the human factor, the human touch, and, and, and the high tech. So can you give us some examples out of the diagnostic imaging uh, uh, space that, that resonate with this, with this connection between humans, healthcare professional patients, and the data and the connectivity? I would love to. And I'll do that also by pointing out a little bit here on the booth floor what we can see as evidence how seriously we, we take this. First of all, outside of diagnostic imaging, we have, for instance, the Azurian pl platform for image-guided therapy. In fact, it's a state-of-the-art system. What, what makes it so important that it's a fundamental workflow and productivity improvement. That's the essence of it. So stepping outside purely of the equipment and the system in itself, but understanding that workflow is a key requirement in the system as a whole. We have our Vireos digital PET CT, state of the art, small lesion detection, faster scan time, and lower dose. If you think about the system, what we're trying to solve in terms of better patient outcomes and more definite diagnosis, it fits that mark. We have our Icon Spectral CT, certainty lives in layers, image quality always on. So you don't have to make a workflow decision in terms of am I making the spectral scan or am I making a normal scan? It's always there at your fingertips. Um, I can go on and on, but I want in terms of the uh, modalities. But I would also like to say that we're also very focused on operational improvements. Okay. So we have a performance bridge solution, which really looks at the network of assets that could sit in a hospital or a chain of hospitals to drive productivity to drive dose management, but across the network and really leveraging the data to get the best possible um, return on your department. Yeah. 
Good, good, wonderful. So, but um, I'm fascinated at the same time also by the topic of artificial intelligence. I said data and insights. And obviously, that leads imme immediately into the question of what is really going to happen in the world of AI? There's a big buzz and a big hype about it. Sure. Many opinions. I'm really curious as a thought leader, Jan, what do you think, where is that going to take us? And how can that help the system perform even better? Yeah, I, I'm going to start with a disclaimer here, Kiz, because I am, uh, I am not an artificial intelligence expert. I am not a computer scientist. Uh, I'm a pediatrician. I have worked in the clinic for more than 20 years. And from that experience, I can understand very well that artificial intelligence can help doctors through their workflow. I visited a, a customer of Philips last week um, and it was a, a huge cancer, stand, cancer center in the United States. And the leader of radiology there, he told me that they are managing 800 CT scans every day. Wow. And that is only 800 patients having a CT scan. That is not the number of slices that they have to look at. Now, these data are much too massive to, to, to look at and to interpret as a human being alone. So I believe that going forward, artificial intelligence can help there. And maybe I can illustrate that with a few examples. The first example is the reporting. We announced a few days ago that we uh, went into a collaboration with Nuance. Nuance is a company that is specialized in, in digital and automatic reporting of image uh, uh, slides. If we can integrate the functionalities that Nuance brings to the table with our Illumio Adaptive Intelligence, we can make it possible for the radiologist to have a real-time reporting out, making his life a lot, a lot easier. That's fascinating. And two other, two other examples, and you mentioned already one of those, are our platforms. The first one is Azurion. Um, if I put myself in the, in the shoes of a cardiologist having to do an intervention in a very complicated uh, catheterization room, I can imagine that that doctor wants all the data necessary to do the, the, the uh, exam the first time right at his fin fingertips. And our Azurian platform is exactly doing that. All the data that the doctor needs to, to do that preparation of the patient, the actual procedure, as well as the post-procedure follow-up, first time right and in a very uh, uh, fast workflow is what Azurion enables. And the other example, and I'm going to close with that one, is our digital pathology platform. Uh, just imagine a, a pathologist that had to look through the microscope to glass slides, and he has to make a diagnosis or he has to find a tumor that the oncologist has to take on for the treatment of his patient. I talked with a pathologist that uh, is running a very big lab recently, and he told me that when a pathologist comes out of school, he needs at least five to six years before he feels com confident and comfortable to send a, especially a negative report out because he is so afraid that he has missed something. With our digital pathology solution, we can, we can use artificial intelligence to, 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 to look at the slide in a digital way, do an automatic contouring, and have an overlay of artificial intelligence disease-specific algorithms on top of that. These are really great things. And I would like to conclude by, by by really highlighting something that is extremely important. In order to meet the needs of the doctors doing these exams, we have to develop these solutions together with them in co-creation. We did that with Azurion, and we do it also with the digital pathology platform. That is really key to our success and to the success of doctors working with our, uh, with our solutions. Truly exciting. Thank Couldn't you. agree more on the point of co-creation with our key opinion leaders. And in fact, what you described, it's also very tangible. So this is not a long-term vision. This is something that we're doing today. It's here now. And it's being implemented in the system. Yeah. That, that's great. I'm going to very quickly summarize and open for Q&A. So I hope what you get out of the session is that we're taking a system perspective. We're empowering the people behind the image. And in fact, there are no silos and no limits to what we're achieving. Good. That's great.